Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347. And in today's video lesson, we're going to be taking a look at a, a very fundamental uh, configuration on a Cisco router that's going to be very useful for your CCNA studies. Uh, when you're going through your CCNA blueprint there and going through the different things that you have to learn, you're going to notice that uh, one of those things is configuring remote access on a Cisco router or a Cisco switch. So let's talk a little bit about what what exactly does that mean configuring remote access. Well remote access is simply just a way that we as network administrators can access our devices remotely over the network. And there's generally a couple different ways to do that. You can use Telnet or you can use something called Secure Shell or SSH. Now what is really the difference there? Well when we're dealing with Telnet it's an older style protocol um, you might know it runs over TCP port number 23 and all the information that's sent over Telnet is in plain text it is sent in the clear so whenever you are remotely administrating a router or a switch using Telnet it's really not the most secure thing in the world we we generally try to uh, to stay away from Telnet as much as possible these days but uh, still important to know so Telnet plain text when you get into Secure Shell, they figured out later down the line, well, if this is not a very secure protocol because it's all sent in plain text, let's come up with something better that is encrypted. And that's what Secure Shell gives us. It gives us remote access to the command line of our routers and switches, but it does it in a secured manner so that all the information between you and the router or switch is encrypted. So those are the basic differences. I'm going to be showing you guys how to go ahead and enable remote access for both Telnet and Secure Shell here today. So very basic setup. We have Router 7 and Router 8 in this particular uh, topology. They're linked together here with a serial, uh, a serial link here, just a regular serial cable. And they are running the EIGRP routing protocol just so that they can exchange uh, the loopback interfaces here so we'll be using those to connect to what we're going to do is we're first going to enable Telnet over on router 8 and show you guys how that works before we go ahead and do that let's jump onto router 7 and let's just go show IP route and make sure we do see our route to router 8 let's see what happens if we try to Telnet to that router without configuring it on the other end. So let's just try a Telnet 8.8.8.8. And we notice that we get this error message, password required, but none set. And then router 8 goes ahead and closes the connection. Well, that's pretty straightforward. It's telling us that uh, basically nothing is configured. So let's go over to router 8, go to enable mode, and into global config mode. Now the part where uh, in the configuration where you want to set up your your Telnet, let's do a quick show run here. And I'm going to pipe that to section line, so that will just show me the part of the config involving the word line. You're really looking at configuring the lines. Okay, you've got a couple different lines on a Cisco router. You've got your console port. You've got your aux port and you've got your VTYs. Your VTYs are your virtual terminals and that is where you're going to configure your remote access. So what this means here when it says line VTY04 there's five virtual terminal lines on most routers. Okay, So this is saying okay go into the virtual terminal we're going to configure virtual terminal 0 through virtual terminal 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, all five of the lines. And anything we put under this config, it's going to go for all five lines. So I'm going to say line VTY04, because I want to configure all the virtual terminal lines. And one of the commands looks like it's in there by default, which is the login command, but we need to set a password on the line. So let's go ahead and set a password of Cisco. And then I'm going to type login just for practice. Generally, those are the two commands you're going to need there. I'm going to hit end and go ahead and write my configuration. 
Now let's go back over to router 7. And we'll try that again. So telnet 8.8.8.8. .8 now we get prompted for a password. So I'll go ahead and type Cisco. And I'm in. Now I'm remotely managing router 8. So let's exit out of there. So that pretty much covers basic telnet. Now there are other things you can do, like if you wanted to set a, a username instead of just a password, or if you wanted to authenticate against a radius server or a TACX server, something like that, you can certainly set all that up too. We're not going to cover that in this video. Um, we will cover, let's look at how to set up a basic username and log in with that username. So first we need to create the username. I'm going to say username Cisco password Cisco. Let's see if that changes anything. Go back to router 7, tell that over to router 8. Nope, same thing. And the reason we have the same thing here, I'm going to jump back out to router 8, is we never told router 8 to go ahead and validate anything based on that username. So if we want it to check the username and not just prompt us for the password, we're going to say line VTY04. This time I'm going to say no password Cisco. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to say login local. That's going to tell it to look at the local database where we just configured that username instead of just taking the password. So let's go back to router 7 and try it again. Telnet 8888. Now you see I get the username prompt. So I'm going to type Cisco. Password is Cisco. And I'm in. So that's a couple different things you can do uh, for configuring Telnet. Now let's get into Secure Shell. So with Secure Shell, there's a couple different things you need to do. One requirement is that you must configure a domain name. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to configure IP domain name and I'm going to say Astrino networks.com. That's step number one. Step number two, because Secure Shell encrypts all the traffic, the way that it encrypts all that traffic and decrypts all that traffic is with encryption keys. So we need to go ahead and generate encryption keys. To do that, we're going to say crypto key generate. The type of key we want is an RSA key. We want general keys. And here we're going to set the modulus. I'm going to say 1024. Now there are a lot of different options. 1024 is a pretty standard one. So that's going to go ahead and generate my keys. Now if you don't have the domain name there, you're going to have problems. So you always want to do the domain name first and then generate your keys. So it's crunching some numbers right now. It should be done here in a second. It's a little bit older of a router. So it might take a little bit of time. So right now it's generating the keys and there we go. When you see this message, you know that it's been enabled. Let's give that another second here. There we go. Now notice it says SSH 1.99 has been enabled. Well, generally, you can run uh, SSH1 or you can run SSH2. So why do I have SSH1.99? Well, that basically just means on a Cisco router you have not enabled Secure Shell version 2. So we're going to go ahead and do that specifically. I'm going to say IP SSH version 2. Now there's one more thing we need to do. We need to go back into our line. And we're going to say transport input. And this is where we have to tell the router what different protocols do we want to allow to connect to this thing for remote access. You can see we have quite a, a list of things. Well, I definitely still want Telnet in our particular case. And I want Secure Shell. So that should about do it. Let's jump back on router 7. First, let's make sure our Telnet still works.
so that's looking good. Let's test out our secure shell. So to secure shell in, I'm going to say SSH, and then I'm going to say 8.8.8.8. It's going to tell me no user is specified. So with secure shell, it works a little bit different than Telnet. If you're using secure shell from a Cisco router, you need to specify the username you're going to use at the command line. So to do that, we're going to say SSH hyphen L, and then the username we want to connect with. So we set up a username of Cisco. So we're going to say Cisco, 8.8.8.8. .8 now it passes that username along. OK, so it knows we want to connect with that username. And I'll type in my password, Cisco. And there I am. I'm securely connected into router 7, or into router 8. Exit back out of that. So that is, in a nutshell, how to configure Telnet and Secure Shell on your Cisco uh, routers. That's going to be about it for today. Pretty quick lesson. Until next time, guys, keep studying hard.